Hi guys, I'm going to do a really quick video here. Uh, what I'm trying to do is capture uh, 433 megahertz signals with a software defined radio device. Uh, and the reason for doing this really is uh, a lot of a lot of you guys that know me know that I've got a Freelander 2 a Land Rover. I've done a lot of CAN bus scanning. I've, I've, I've took off, off a lot of data. One thing I can't get is the tire pressures. And uh, I know that the that, that little module inside the inside the wheel actually does give out tire pressures, but the dashboard just says when one goes flat, and it just it just highlights uh, you know a little graphic on the on the on the dashboard saying that you know a particular wheel's at low pressure. And I wanted to get the actual PSI, <clears throat> so I managed to do that. It took me a little bit of time to 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 do. I've looked at the videos on online on 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 YouTube, and there's just some things that just aren't quite right. Uh, maybe maybe because things have moved on a little bit. So I'm just going to do a really quick video of how to install the software I needed, what what equipment I bought, and then I'll do a separate video. But I'm going to record them both at the same time, just break them into two, so it's not not too long long for people to look look at because people might have already already the software installed. Uh, we're then going to look at the look at the extra parameters of using the software itself to capture the more difficult signals to get, and they're not that much tire pressure monitoring system was difficult to capture because it I just literally put the air in the car drove down the down the road now getting signals immediately but uh one particular temperature monitoring station that, uh, that i have was a little bit difficult to know i could see the signal coming in it wouldn't decode it uh or it was very 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 intermittent you know every 30 minutes i'd get i i'd, I'd capture a signal and it did update so just going to go through a little bit of that here so anyway, without any further ado, let's have a look at what we need and what I've bought. So first of all, let's look at the hardware. So what I've done is I bought this this RTL SDR. It's an official version. Just be aware, there's lots of copies out of this, and it's the version four. So it's the latest version as, as I record this. Now, to be fair, perhaps the version three would be better for the novice because all the software supports version three, and there's currently some some you know uh, some some issues with with some of the legacy software. And of course, you question that whether they, it, the legacy stuff will ever actually get updated for version four. But version four is what what I bought. I did some research. Nobody was saying don't buy buy V four. And you know, at the end of the day, I've I've got it working for what I need I needed to do. Let's have a quick look at the antenna I bought. So I'm doing four four hundred thirty three megahertz. So I bought this I bought this little little antenna. Uh, it's a 433 megahertz, uh, 3 dBi gain, RG174 cable. I believe that 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 is that is four. So it's just a little little stubby magnetic bound uh, antenna. Now, I'm going to be honest. I think if I was going to do that again, I would have actually spent the extra ten pounds. I think it was. I just bought the bought the antenna kit and got the official official antenna kit because just when you're googling about on 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 the internet. You start to see other things that you can do with this software defined radio, and you think, "Oh, wouldn't that be wouldn't, wouldn't that be good?" But I haven't got the antennas, so it's probably going to cost me a lot more in the long run. And for that extra ten, I would probably just like like to have a mess about. So if you're going to buy one, get the antenna one. Okay, so let's have a look at the software that that we need. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is download this software here on airspy.com. Download. And we're going for this revision here, and if we download this, it is version four compatible, which is why we're doing it in this software because this is this is going to download everything you need. Uh, it's going to update the drivers as long as you install it properly. Uh, so let's just go here and download this bit. So once you've downloaded that and it's and and it appears in your uh, downloads folder, just have a look at this this quick start guide here. Uh, and this tells you everything you need to know. It tells you to watch out for for the clones that are about, uh, and then it goes on to tell you what what you need to do to you know to download the software, <clears throat> the things that you need to make sure you've got it installed. I'm going to assume you've got all that installed. Uh, make sure you do this bit. Make sure you do this bit. This this bit goes away and gets those updated drivers for version four. So make sure we absolutely do this bit. Uh, Okay, and then you then you plug in your dongle. Make sure you do this bit because you are going to need to update your uh, 
your uh, your drivers using this uh, zag zag dig or zadig whatever whatever that is. Uh, it's don't worry too much about that. You might get some some strange sort of messages and that, but you know this this is this is really popular. Uh, if you mess around with anything like this, it's really popular to have to have to change drivers, and and this is the program that everybody uses. You know, you might get some 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 you know some sort of pop ups that make you worry a little bit, but just just crack on and do it. Once you've got that, make sure you do this bit. Select the source in here. Uh, if you if you're worried about your drivers, let's just plug plug this in in in, in a minute for a minute. I can't have my mouse at the same time, so forgive me for using a different different mouse here. Uh, I would want to just show you that if I click on here and ta start typing device, I get up a device manager up here. I just wanted to show you what a successful install looks like after you've used that zag dig you should be getting this here an extra usb composite device and you should get this extra line here for these uh sorry controllers usb com uh, composite controller and you should get these bulking interface now there's a little bit of warning that sometimes they say different things here i suppose it depends what what, what hardware you're using but you should have something that appears here if i unplug it there you go unplug the, the dondle it's disappeared plug it back in again and it comes back if you've got something happening like this and there's no exclamation marks here it, that's probably working so that wouldn't be your issue if you're having issues so we're gonna we're gonna scroll down here a bit make sure you press the play button and then it should should start working and if if, if everything starts to look like you've got these uh these sort of things scrolling down the screen so let me go back to my install see if you've got something happening like this and i'm finding out with this silly mouse if you've got something and you plug it in you start your air spy you won't have this at this moment so i'm going to turn that off if you start if you put, click on that it starts doing this sort of thing then it's working guys okay you can you can you can set this frequency up here by by clicking up up and down here on the top and bottom. Get it somewhere around here four three four. Uh, actually, the 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 official scanning thing is that. So put it put, put it to four three three. So you should be getting something like this happening. Okay, once you've got to that stage, it's it's the time to install the four three three megahertz plugin. Okay, so the next stage is we need to go here. To this uh, github page marco 402 and here we need to download his uh his project as a zip file don't be tempted to go in here and try and download individual files make sure we do this this bit so we're going to download the zip i've already done this so if we go if, if we go there it'll download as normal we go to downloads we've got this we've got this plugin here uh and you see It'll come something like this, probably this one that I did yesterday. Uh, if you right click on that, I use seven zip extract here, and then you'll end up with a with a with with, with a proper folder folder full of files. Now, what you're looking for here, guys, and this is the bit that's confusing, and, and, and don't worry about whether you plug your dundle in early or late. Just 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 follow that install. You know, if you've been a bit a bit of a man like I am. You know, you, you know, you get the new dongle out of the packet and you whack it straight in, in, in the in the computer and realize nothing's working. Then you look at the instructions. You've broken nothing. Just just follow that install guide. It's still going to work. Okay, guys. But the plugin works like this. You look in the install folder and I want you to use this. Don't use the framework ones. Use, use this one here. And you want these three files here. You're going to copy these here. And you're, then you're going to go to your your download wherever you've put it of your SDR sharp and I put mine in here SDR sharp and I want you to create a plugins folder sorry there will be a plugins folder you're going to create a folder it doesn't matter what you name it really but I've just named it uh, DL underscore 433 and you just drop those three files in that folder and what that gives you guys is that when you go back and you run the program like this you're going to go up to the uh, 
the burger, I think people call it. Uh, plugins, you'll end up with this plugins, and then you can select this down here, look guys. Nice and easy, and it'll 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 come up here. Okay. Now we're ready to go. If I click here and play, enable the plugin, leave it on listed device. We're going to go through this in in, in more detail in in a moment on a, on, a, on another video. But just just as a very quick thing, we're going to do that. We're going to click start. This should come up, and we start getting all, we get start getting all sorts of messages. So this is this is this is a decoding messages. And then if it gets a good good signal, one that it can decode, fingers crossed I'll get one in a moment, then it will actually put up different messages. But we're gonna we're gonna go through this. There you go. So there you go. It's just it's just got one of my very hard uh hard to read devices, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. So that's enough for now. Hopefully that's enough to get you by. There's lots of other videos on installing which is why I've done it really, really quickly. I just wanted to cover off the bits where I struggled with. Uh and, and and make sure you you definitely follow that in, install guide to make sure sure you do it correctly. And now we'll move on to the on onto the next video of how to get those really hard to read uh, devices working as I've got going here.